Okay, in this section of DNA replication, I want to talk about the resolution of Okazaki fragments. We started the last video with a structure like this, a double-stranded DNA that we wanted to replicate. Uh, on the top is a ball representing DNA polymerase, and on the bottom is shown all the nucleoside triphosphates. We, in the last video, we were able to go from this structure to a replication fork that looked like this, and from the last um, video, you should be able to label this replication fork as follows. Uh, the replication fork has a leading strand. Uh, that leading strand is synthesized based on complementarity to the leading strand template. And the lagging strands are complementary to the sequence of the lagging strand template. The lagging strand template is also referred to as are these short fragments called Okazaki fragments. And the Okazaki fragments and resolving them is the topic of this uh, video. So well, let's finish polymerizing uh, the DNA as well as we can using DNA polymerase and RNA primase. So the upper double-stranded DNA molecule can uh, can continue to be synthesized because there's a 3' prime hydroxyl available and there's DNA template available. So DNA polymerase can work on that just fine. The bottom strand requires a new Okazaki fragment, and RNA primase uh, comes in and will lay down, will synthesize a new short molecule of RNA that is complementary to the template. This RNA primer now provides a 3' prime hydroxyl that is a substrate for DNA polymerase, so that DNA polymerase can now extend from that 3' prime hydroxyl and synthesize DNA that is now complementary to the template strand. And DNA polymerases will continue to do that until they have synthesized uh, as much as possible. At this point, the upper strand, uh, DNA synthesis is complete. The polymerase has reached the end of the template strand, and no more synthesis can occur. And that's also true on the bottom strand. There, um, the polymerase has extended the DNA as uh, far as it can. It has bumped into another Okazaki fragment, but the polymerase has no way of doing anything with that Okazaki fragment. And this is the problem we, that has to be resolved. So let's zoom in on and focus on two of these three Okazaki fragments. So what I'm showing here now is a piece of DNA with two Okazaki fragments. Each Okazaki fragment, the green represents the RNA primer, and the red represents the DNA that was synthesized continuously from that primer from DNA polymerase. Realize that each Okazaki fragment has a 5' prime end and a 3' prime end, and at the 5' prime end, is a uh, triphosphate, a 5' prime triphosphate, and at the 3' prime end is a 3' prime hydroxyl. All of the bases on the template strand are paired with bases of the newly synthesized nucleic acid, so there are no unpaired bases in this stretch. And this is where the um, replication polymerase will leave things off. What does exist is a gap, is not a gap, is a nick between the end of one Okazaki fragment and the beginning of the next. So what's in the middle of the screen there uh, is a 3' prime hydroxyl on the end of the DNA that is right next to a 5' prime triphosphate of the RNA uh, adjacent to it. And this is what has to be resolved. So a different uh, DNA polymerase is used to resolve these fragments. This DNA polymerase has a number of properties. One is that it has an exonuclease activity, it is able to degrade uh, RNA molecules um, by cleaving the phosphodiester backbone, and it has a DNA polymerase activity as well. It is able to polymerize DNA, again, from a 3' prime hydroxyl, like all polymerases. So what this repair polymerase does is it breaks the phosphodiester backbone as shown, uh, as I just did. So at the, where the arrowhead is now exists a new 3' prime hydroxyl and a new 5' prime monophosphate. So there is a new nick in the backbone. This polymerase then causes the displacement of uh, the base that is no longer covalently attached. Sorry, not the base, the nucleoside that is no longer covalently attached. And I want to remind you that that nucleoside looks like this. It has uh, a triphosphate, and it is an RNA nucleoside, and has a hydroxyl groups 
on both the two prime and three prime carbons. Now once that nucleoside has been displaced, there's a gap. You'll see a gap now in the in the DNA strand, in the DNA structure. There is now a base on the template strand that is not paired with a base from newly synthesized strand. So the DNA polymerase activity of this repair polymerase will now extend the three prime hydroxyl, add the appropriate base, and make a new phosphodiester backbone, uh, a new phosphodiester bond, extending the three prime end uh, one position. This repair polymerase will then nick the RNA again and displace the nucleoside and extend the DNA. And the repair polymerase will nick the RNA. It will displace the nucleoside and extend the three prime end. It will nick the RNA. It will displace the nucleoside and it will extend the three prime end. And one last time, the repair polymerase will nick the backbone, displace the nucleoside, and extend the three prime end. We're now at a new structure where a three prime hydroxyl of DNA abuts a five prime monophosphate of DNA. The repair polymerase cannot do anything with this structure. This structure is resolved, so I'm going to show you the three prime hydroxyl and the five prime phosphate, monophosphate of this structure. This structure is resolved by a different enzyme, an enzyme called DNA ligase. DNA ligase uh, recognizes a 3' prime hydroxyl and a 5' prime phosphate, and along with ATP, uh, will make the phosphodiester bond to seal the NIC. So DNA ligase does that, making a continuous phosphodiester backbone where there was once a gap. So we went, sorry, a NIC. So we went from a NIC to a no NIC by DNA ligase and ATP. So in summary, we started with a one double-stranded DNA molecule at the beginning, and the goal is to make two double-stranded DNA molecules. Before we understood how to deal with Okazaki fragments, we made these two molecules, but the bottom one had some problems because of these fragments. So what we've talked about in this video is how DNA polymerase, uh, the repaired DNA polymerase, uh, is involved in removing the RNA portion of these molecules and extending the three prime hydroxyl of the DNA, generating NICs in the backbone, and then how now DNA ligase plus ATP seals the NIC, generating a continuous d DNA backbone. So now we have a situation where we now have two, two double-stranded molecules of DNA. We start with one, we now have two, that's DNA replication. There is, however, a problem. I want you to think about what this problem is, I want you to recognize the problem, and I want you to read and understand how cells solve this problem. I want you to come to class on Monday ready to discuss how this problem is dealt with. Uh, if you don't understand what the problem is, try replicating this DNA again. And remember that the, the DNA polymerases that we've talked about so far are DNA-dependent DNA polymerases. DNA-dependent. The template must be DNA in order for them to extend on it. Uh, so these are DNA-dependent DNA polymerases. I'll see you on Monday, and we'll talk about this problem.